Hello friends and welcome to this week's episode of Grits in the Gospel. My name is Reverend Katie Griffiths and we welcome you today on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost, uh, September 29th, 2024. It is my hope that um, after <laughs> the storm, the storm is approaching as I record this, my hope is that all are safe after it has passed. And we uh, look forward to seeing all of you in worship. And we're glad if you couldn't be with us in worship today that you're able to listen here um, on this podcast. Um, My prayer is that you are safe and secure. Let us come together today in a posture of worship. The Lord be with you and also with you. Today's epistle lesson is from the book of James. In this text, he shows us how we can care for one another through prayer while we deal with our own sins. Hear now the words of James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are you cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth and is back by another, brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us come together today as we say those words that remind us of the tenets of our faith. Friends, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, we come to you today in awe of this earth, in awe of your might and power. Bring us through all of life's storms. Give us friends and support to traverse life's hardest times together with. Be with all of those who are affected by the storms that have come through. Help them to heal as much as we help the earth to heal. Be with us this week as we strive to be helpful to our neighbor and to love our neighbor well. Hear us now as we pray those words that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. March 24, 1958, Elvis Presley was inducted into the United States Army. Much to the horror of just about every teenage girl, and who are we kidding, most of their mothers in this country. This national treasure could not risk his life in the army because every one of these girls wanted him back at home singing and crooning his way into our hearts. One such group of girls decided to go straight to the top and be very specific in their plea to the president. They penned this letter in cursive and with a heart that enclosed the letters E.P. Forever. Of course, the four was written as the number four for better effect. And the ending even included a cheer for good measure. Box 755, Knoxon, Montana. Dear President Eisenhower, My girlfriends and I are riding all the way from Montana. We think it's bad enough to send Elvis Presley in the army, but if you cut his sideburns off, we will just die. You don't know how we feel about him. I really don't see why you have to send him in the army at all, but we beg you, please, please don't give him a GI haircut. Oh, please, please don't. If you do, we will just about die. Signed, Elvis Presley lovers, Linda Kelly, Sherry Bain, Mickey Matson. And it closes with this little ditty. Presley, Presley is our cry. P-R-E-S-L-E-Y. Here now with reverence. The words of Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you, if any of you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for you if a great millstone was hung around your neck, and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worms never, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. My hairstylist told me one time that he loved it when women broke up with a boyfriend or got a divorce. He loved it because we, as women, tend to want to change our look when we get a fresh start. 
I'm no different. I love my long hair. But when a big change happens in my life, I love to whack it off and start fresh. I did it as soon as I moved up here. Six inches gone. Sometimes, especially as children, things can go very wrong with our hair. And a good whacking is necessary, whether we want it or not. Like when a young child gets a hold of some scissors and decides bangs are the way to go. Or when something like the hair nightmare of the summer of 1988 happens like it did to me. I spent most of that summer in a pool. Camp pools, friends pools, family pools. And while it was so much fun, and while I did in fact wash my hair when I got out of the pool each time, the chlorine was just too much for this tow-headed girl's locks. You guessed it. My hair turned green. And while there are shampoos to help with the green, the only real solution is to let it grow out. So guess what happened to Katie's hair in the early days of my sixth grade year? Yep, you guessed it. I went from having long blonde hair to short green hair. If you remember back to last week's verses, Jesus had just held up a child as an example of how to live out our salvation. Mark 9, 36, remember, says this, Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. And now Jesus takes it a step further. He warns them what will happen if that child is not taken care of. If any of you cause one of these little ones to believe in me, who believe in me to sin, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. This verse always makes me giggle a little. A friend who shall remain nameless and I always look at each other and say the word quickcrete when someone is treating someone else poorly. Quickcrete is a fast-drying concrete that could, say, make a great millstone and you could tie it around someone's neck. Now, friends, hear this. We are joking. We would never actually do this. We cannot sentence anyone to this fate. But the idea comes from this verse. It's Jesus' Quickcrete verse. It's probably where the mafia of old got the idea from as well. The message is clear. If you cause one little one, one child, or may I also propose one child of God to sin, you will go the way of the quick creep. The last shall be first of it all. Jesus is first most worried about his believers causing others to sin, doing harm to others instead of helping themselves. We are to put others first, not just in our care of them, but in the way we avoid leading them astray. But it does not stop there. The next few verses are a warning to those who sin and do not repent and turn from it. Jesus gets pretty real with them about how they and we are to handle our own sin. It's downright graphic. Cut off your hand and your foot and be maimed or go to hell and the unquenchable fire. Tear out your eyeball rather than go to hell where the worms are are and and where there is an unquenchable fire. Well, thank you, Jesus, for that very Beetlejuice reality check of what happens to us when we sin. Which gets me back to those haircuts. I'm sure you are wondering about how Elvis's sideburns and my green hair were relevant. Elvis cutting his sideburns as a requirement of the military service was necessary for that service. The young girls of America, especially Linda, Sherry, and Mickey, were devastated by the maiming of Elvis's hair. In the end, Elvis did not only look just fine 
really about the same without sideburns. He started a trend of sideburn removal. In the end, the girls still screamed just as loudly when they saw him. In the end, it wasn't as bad as everyone thought it would be. For me, the green hair was an embarrassment. I had no choice at all but to cut it off to get rid of the thing that was causing snickers and ridicule. It was the cutting of my hair that got me somewhat back to normal. Cutting is not always bad. Cutting things away that make you less of who you are is not always bad. Cutting things out of your life that need to be cut so new things can grow is a good way to start fresh and create new growth. When we look at our lives, when we look at the people we associate with or the ways that we talk to people that are hurtful or the things that are causing us not only to sin, but to have hurt and pain and suffering, cutting them off is painful, but it's not bad at all. In the end, it makes us more Christ-like. In the end, it helps us to live a more fulfilling and peaceful existence. Sometimes it takes a little fire to end up with a purified heart, to cut free of the sin and pain. Verse 49 says, For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. In my very unscientific research, I found that Elvis didn't really start growing those sideburns back until the mid to late 1960s. And I kept my hair short until I went off to college. Those haircuts were not a bad thing at all. I think that's a good lesson from today's text in Mark. We should get our spiritual haircuts as often as we can before we have to light our hair on fire. It is painful, yet ultimately cleansing and renewing. We have to cut the things out of our life that we hold on to like hurt and bitterness. If we hold on to them too long, it keeps our hearts in darkness. And that darkness starts to spread to those around us. But if we cut out those things that keep our hearts in the dark... Then we can let in the light, like cutting back dead branches on a tree to let the light get to the heart of the plant. We can then grow and be more fruitful. Our light can shine so much brighter when we choose joy and excitement instead of pain and bitterness. But it's the James scripture that really brings it back around full circle. James reminds us how we should take care of each other, not by causing each other to sin, but by praying for one another. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of the faithful will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sin will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. It keeps us from the gruesome fate that awaits us in the fiery pits and the worms of hell. It keeps us from being maimed and without part of ourselves. And if we work to do those fruitful things together, pray for each other, love each other, and maybe start with not causing each other to sin in the first place, We can build that community that we are longing to have. Be the salt and the light for each other. Now we can take the salty thing too far. We need to do that part with kindness. But both of those things in community help us find peace. And when we do sin, because we are humans, and we have that pesky thing called free will, then James gives us hope there too. 
My brothers and sisters, if any one among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. God's grace, the example of the Savior and prayer. The only combination that can bust up the quick crete that we sometimes find ourselves drowning with. As we go throughout our week, let us work diligently to cut away those things that keep us from living a life of Christ, that keep our hearts and our spirits in darkness, and that keep the light from shining. Cut those things away so the light of Christ can shine as brightly as possible and draw people to him and to the church so we can build community together. Because in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>